Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we are installing a two-way zone valve. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we're installing a two-way zone valve. In front of us we have an absorption chiller. Right now we don't have access to the hotel room for a two-pipe fan coil unit but we have access to this room so we're going to start prepping this zone valve by soldering it and having it in place by the time we have access to the room. We are working on a two-pipe fan coil unit. Right now we are actually still in cooling mode even though we're in those off-season months where it gets chilly at night but it's okay during the day. So the way this works as of right now if the water is cold, which it is, and they want cooling, they're gonna send voltage to this actuator. And this is an electric motor that opens and closes this valve. So if they want cooling, it's gonna send 120 volts to this actuator, and it's gonna open this valve, send the chilled water through into the coil, and a fan blows across that coil, and boom, you got air conditioning. When there is in heating mode, this is going to essentially do the same thing if the water is hot it's gonna send voltage to this actuator from the thermostat might go through some controls like some auto changeover switches or pipe sensors whatever you want to call them and it's gonna sense the water is hot this motor is gonna open this valve send the hot water through into the coil and the fan is gonna blow across and you have heating right now it's actually a tricky season where the water is actually chilled it's cold so if you ask for cooling it's going to open the valve but if you ask for heating it's the auto changeover switch or the pipe sensor is going to sense that the water is cold and instead of opening this actuator and cooling the room right because you can only be one temperature at a time with the two pipe so it's either heating or cooling if it senses that the water is cold it's actually going to send power to an electrical heater that's in the system but anyways let's go ahead and start prepping all right, so you could actually pop off this actuator. This is actually a 24 volt actuator, but I had to purchase this assembly just so I can get the valve. We're gonna use a different actuator. So there's a release button here. Just push that and pop it off. What we need is this. So what we're gonna do is, of course, sand the inside of our fittings and the outside of our pipes. As you can see this side is sanded nice and shiny. You're also going to want to deburr the inside and the outside of this pipe. We're going to solder this valve with map gas and solder. We're using 95.5. So you're going to want to use soldering paste or flux and flux the inside of your fittings and the outside of the pipe and when you put it on don't have any excess around the rim Smoke alarms are off and let's heat this thing up.
the other side. guys everything is prepped so we're gonna go and hang out and wait until that room clears up we actually might even go to that GameStop the new Mario game just came out so who knows might as well go pick that up and grab a coffee all right guys it's official all right four hours later it's noon let's get started here we have a two pipe fan coil unit and the actuator works, but the valve is actually bad. And this is honestly a really, really tight space to work in here. So my idea is to just prop open that valve and install a new one further down the line. All right, we're in the hallway outside of the room. And here are some shut off valves. Let's close those off. That one's closed, and that one's closed. All right, so this is the supply, this is the return. So it's gotta be coming this way and leaving that way. What will be perfect is if I can put this right here. The only thing is, is the return line is up above. So honestly, it looks like we got enough space to actually take off the actuator when the time comes so it'll be like right here you don't need much space and then that'll just pop right off so let's cut back this insulation it'll be perfect if i can get it right here honestly it'll be great just got this bx in the way but when i cut this out i should be able to just like transfer it to the side make some space and double check this all right we got just enough space that this actuator can actually come off if we put it right here and like this we have everything open instead of having to squeeze through here and possibly cutting the ceiling here so this is gonna be my go-to right here perfect all right so somehow there's actually a drain valve here on one of the lines Let's open that up. Yeah, nothing's really coming out. <laughs> well, that's good though. I mean, at least the valve's closed. This thing just could be just clogged, honestly. Once I cut the pipe, some air will go into the system and it'll probably flow from there. Let me see if there might be a bleeder here. All right, so I close that off so it doesn't like drip on my face. So the reason we're actually changing this is because the heating and cooling both come on at the same time in the sense that, yeah, the electrical heater comes on and it's working electrically and the actuator is supposedly closing the valve the valve just keeps squeezing water through. They changed the actuator, but it still squeezes water through. So even with the electrical heat on, you only got like 70 degrees. So that's no good. I got a plastic garbage bag in here right now. And the reason is for that is because I can't really have anything good to catch the water. So we're gonna cut this out the way and let it drain into this bag as it can mold. Let's see, do I have enough space for this cutter? All right, it's just making it. Let's cut this out. All right, it looks like it's just about cut. Nothing's squirting out, so it looks like we're safe. All right, there we go.
Before I chop the whole thing off, let's let that be. All right, guys, that was it. Now, let's size this up and cut the next one. All right, that's out of the way. Now I'm just gonna prep the edges of those pipes and we're gonna get everything in. Just wanna get rid of any burrs. I'm using slip couplings and I do have a pro press. So for this, there's no stop in the middle. So you could actually run this all the way through and adjust it to where you need to. And these are perfect when you like you don't have that much play. We got a little bit of play here, so you could use a regular coupling, but like this, you see it fits perfectly in here. And then like this, you just literally slip, slip this across. Slip this across, of course, center it. And boom, it fits. I also moved all the wires above the pipe. Let's just make sure we got enough space here, and we do, in case this actuator ever needs to be replaced. That's a beautiful thing. Let's hit it. how easy it is with this tool. Absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Let's get this actuator on there. Beautiful. All right. Okay, that's open. Side. All right, everything is looking good. No leaks. Let's force this open so I know it's on the other side. Pushing down the spring. You can hear the water passing through. And yep, it's looking good. Awesome, man, that's freaking awesome. All right, rooms at 71. We set it to 75. Heat. Fan auto. Let's see what happens. All right, guys, we got 88.3 degrees and rising, and these really don't get much hotter than that, but that's absolutely amazing because before with the water squeezing through, you wouldn't get higher than 70 degrees. Now we're testing the cooling. And we got 54 degrees. Awesome. All right, lines are condensating. Everything is nice and chilled. So from here, we're just gonna insulate the rest of this pipe. All right, we got some fiberglass insulation on there. It's looking good, but this valve will sweat. So I'm trying to figure out something. I can either put foam tape or cork insulation tape. I think the cork insulation tape would work better as this one right here kind of, it forms a special shape. And it even says right there, use an iron pipe, copper tubing, tees, valves, and fittings. So I'm not gonna match in color, but I do have some white tape to make it blend in on top. Let's get a little bit of something on there. 
and yeah this looks awesome compared to this looking tape up here just duct tape and just all messy kind of just fit it around the valve and then we'll tape over it to make it blend in all right guys looks great everything is working that was it i'm gonna wrap this one up here if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week i'll catch you all next time